Hello, this is Pastor Megan Roar and I'm here at Greenwell Farms in Kona, Hawaii and here to learn a little bit more about how coffee is made and the difference and reasons why fair trade coffee is an important thing. So here's a little tour. Check it out. Daniel from Kona and this is a coffee tree. And notice how some of the red uh, coffee is intermingled with a green and yellow bean. And this happens because in the spring, uh, the coffee flowers uh, eight different times instead of just once, like most trees. Well, all the beans start growing at a different time, and they all ripen at a different time. So we have to pick all these beans in hand. That becomes very, very labor intensive. And what we want to do is we want to pick the ones that are cherry red. And once we pick them from the tree, we only have 24 hours uh, to peel off the skin and start processing the coffee. Because coffee is actually a fruit, and the sugar that's uh, the natural part of the uh, coffee fruit will start to ferment if we don't get rid of it. So over here is a wet mill, and this is where the coffee trucks come and bring in their coffee beans. That's a big scale where they weigh this. And what they need to do is peel off the coffee skin, and they get two coffee beans like a peanut. And it's very slippery because that's the fruit of the coffee, and it's actually very sweet, but that's the part that we don't want. So the skin goes to the compost pile to get recycled as natural fertilizer. But the coffee bean ends up in vats of water over here. And it can soak in the water for six to eight hours to break down the fruit covering. Mm -hmm. Not too bad. Yeah. Uh, and then once the uh, fruit dissolves into the water, and we remove the uh, sugar water. The coffee beans are piped up into that black contraption there. Uh, and then it is spread out to uh, dry on the coffee decks out here. And the coffee has to dry in the sun for about four days. Once they get down to 11, 12 o'clock moisture content, we end up with what's called parchment. And while the fruit was on it, it would have been impossible. But now that the fruit is off and we've dried the coffee beans, then we can peel off the inside layer called parchment and we finally end up with the green coffee bean. What's good about this is it's good for two years, but at any time during those two years, if it's roasted, it turns into that wonderful tasting coffee. And then, of course, once it turns into that wonderful tasting coffee, it's important to keep it in an airtight container to keep it fresh. Uh, we actually have to pick seven pounds of red cherry off the tree in order to just make one pound of roasted coffee to drink. Very good. Okay. Perfect. And how long How long do they spend picking? Uh, they start picking the end of August. Uh, we have 65,000 coffee trees and a crew of about 30 people who start at the bottom of the farm the end of August. And it literally takes them three weeks to pick their way up to here. And then the day they're finished, it's time to go back down to start all over. And they go through the trees eight times over five and a half months. All by hand, right? All done by hand. That's great. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. So like the coffee grown here at Greenwell Farms, a lot of coffee is grown at family farms where they have just enough, uh, about three to four acres that they can hand pick as a family and make a little bit of extra income for. And because it's such a labor intensive project, if you're not paying for the the full labor intensive amount of work that coffee creates. It creates a very difficult situation for families who are trying to make a living and continue the livelihoods they've had for generations upon generations. So look into ways that your congregation can support fair trade coffee or ways that you can support fair trade farming in the spaces where you live. Mahalo.